Before I begin, I'm recording this during a hurricane because I have my priorities straight. So if you hear some rain, that's what's going on. Greetings Sentinels fans. A while ago, I looked at one of Sentinels least appreciated villains, Spite. Now it's time to go to the other one, Misinformation. The sad thing here is that just like Spite, I love the concept of the villain, even if I think the deck is poorly made. In this case, we have a spy in Amongst the Heroes. Amenia Twain served almost as the Alfred of the Freedom Five, acting as pretty much their greatest support character. She was their secretary and pretty much ran the Freedom Five headquarters. Then her mind got body swapped with another Amenia in a different universe, a much more bitter and angry version. So now we have an evil secretary who knows the heroes really well and thus could combat them effectively in secret. Which goes to show, never mess with the secretary. To that end, she sends them on missions that the heroes are woefully unprepared for, misrepresenting the threats and misinforming the heroes so they mistake any misconduct and meet misfortune. Therefore, the heroes must solve a mystery to find the miscreant. The idea isn't horrible. The game is split into two parts. The first part is about figuring out who is messing the heroes up. After misinformation is revealed, it's a regular hero fight against her. Now while the second part has its issues, it's the first part that is the biggest problem. You see, she has no hit points and no easy way to speed up her flipping. Indeed, the only way to make her flip is to get a bunch of cards with the clue keyword in play. Thing is, there is no way to hurry this process along. You seriously have to wait for her to get the proper cards out, all the while letting her wail on you. The only way to speed this up is if you brought a hero that can perform deck manipulation and weed out those clues. You know it's a bad time when I suggest using one of my banned strategies. Not to mention that many of these clues are pretty nasty in their own right. What doesn't kill you increases damage heroes receive as well as allowing Miss Info to play extra cards. Insider Knowledge reduces damage she takes as well as returns distractions to the field. Concealed Betrayal destroys your setup. Suspicious Malfunction forces you to either destroy a bunch of equipments or else receive a lot of area damage. Misplaced Memo makes a bad guy immune to damage and makes the heroes hit themselves. Finally, Isolated Hero prevents a hero from benefiting or receiving the benefits from their allies as if they are fighting completely alone. Any one of these can be dangerous, but you have to keep a bunch of these out in order to flip misinformation. Since you need to wait for these, misinfo can stall you out for two turns minimum, or the entire game maximum. More on that later. And yeah, there are 13 of these cards, but that still means that rotten luck can really mess you up. The flip side is also going to hurt a lot, as the first hit she takes per turn causes her to retaliate making players want to hit her sparingly and build up to big hits or prevent her from dealing damage. She also has heroes hit themselves each turn as she destroys one of the clues she collected on her front side. This can make the bonuses you pick up hurt. A lot. The only saving grace here is that she has a small health pool. But let's circle back to her deck. We already covered half her deck with the clues, but we have the cards with her other unique keyword, diversions. Once again, individually they aren't that bad each of them basically annoyances by themselves. But again, misinformation has this bad habit of getting a lot of stuff in play very quickly, including the diversions. In a way, these feel like environment cards that snuck into a villain deck, as they don't always gel with the other cards, but they can interact almost indirectly. The problem here is another effect on misinformation's character card front side. Every round, she destroys hero setup based on the amount of distractions in play. This could mean that she could be destroying no cards if you're on top of things, or if things are getting out of hand, she could be destroying four or five cards a turn. If I may remind you of my Choke Point episode, Choke Point destroys your setup frequently, but usually pretty slowly. So if anything, the heroes can outpace her. Well, we have a bit of the opposite problem here. Misinformation is breaking your stuff too fast. I'd say this is arguably worse than devastating Aurora, since once you deal with admittedly both copies of it, you are done. You don't have to deal with it anymore. Misinformation is vindictively following behind your heroes and breaking their stuff almost as quickly, and in some cases faster than your heroes. Behold my raptor of awesomeness! With it I will... What? Where'd it go? I think the idea was to have the diversions present so that the players have something to do while waiting for misinformation to flip. But having this added problem can be very punishing. On the subject of diversions, we have diversionary tactics. This one reveals some cards in her deck and places revealed diversions into play. Then it shuffles her trash into her deck before playing another card. 
I can also understand the rationale for this one. Since most of her deck consists of clues, having an easy method of getting a bunch of diversions can keep players busy, as well as allow a smaller amount of them by shuffling them back into the villain deck. This wouldn't be really all that bad, just as long as it doesn't hit too often. So how many copies of this are there? Four? That seems... excessive. And here I thought it was much for Chairman to have two prison breaks. This brings us to a variation of an issue that I have with Ambuscade's deck. Dear lord, I didn't expect to be referencing two of my Easy Villains episodes today. When a villain has multiple cards that reset the villain deck, it really screws up the randomness of the decks. Suddenly there is no surety that you will end up with certain cards. For Ambuscade, it puts devices you break back into use, but also hides charged attacks. For misinformation, it returns the diversions and other one-shots. And with four of these, a 16% chance of finding them per turn, at least, it will take the other copies and put them back into use. Oh yeah, the other one-shots. Oh. My. God. These things. Welcome to even more cards on the same level of cruelty as Prison Break, Devious Disruption, and Aurora. Let's start with missing resources. When this pops, you choose a player to reveal the top card of their deck. When they do, every hero has to discard every card that has one of the keywords. So if a one-shot shows up, all the other one-shots go bye-bye. With a little bit of bad luck, this card will empty out your hero's hands. And then we have another reality's debt. When this card appears, you will be feeling the same pain that Absolute Zero is feeling in the artwork. When this shows up, all heroes must either toss their entire hand in the trash or clear their play areas of all their setup cards. Constructs deconstructed, devices ditched, golems gone. So either you must destroy all the setup you did before this, or grind your future setup to a complete and utter halt. Also, I'm not entirely clear on if you can't do one option if it will force you to do the other. Now, like all the nastiest setup destruction, it's always best for these to be played early, preferably on the first turn. But if it forces a bad time, then there isn't any point in the game where this is an okay card to be played. So to sum up, like I did for the Spike video, I'm making all the callbacks today. Let's count the sins of this villain deck. Cruel cards, resetting the deck, really speedy setup destruction, and an entire phase where heroes have to wait and do nothing, slowing down the game until the villain is good and ready to flip. Also worth noting is that in the physical game, she is a bonus deck. In the digital mini packs, the extras are sold in groups of three or four. In physical, they are sold individually. So while in digital you can get misinformation along with Scholar and Final Wasteland, you will have to specifically be looking for misinformation if you're getting her in physical, unlike Spite who is included in the Rook City expansion. It makes me wonder if misinformation has the lowest sales in physical since she has such a bad reputation. And I will close off with a question. Which do you like less, Spite or misinformation? I find that they're about equal in terms of dislikability and usually your preference is, well, your preference. Anyways, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, friends.